Hello, and welcome to Schmidty's Guide to E5 Tanking, the gear and the build that we'll be using. Uh, and that's really exactly what we're doing in this video. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to do is look at the gear that I ex would uh, hope that you'll be using as a E5 Plus tank. Uh, some of this stuff is going to be similar to what you've seen in my beginning tank guide, if you've seen that. But there's a lot of differences. It's really important. So stick around. Uh, obviously, if you've seen any of my DPS guides or know anything about this game, uh, you know that this is all DPS gear, right? And that's not a mistake. Uh, if you are a DPS, you can absolutely tank. If you are a healer who has at least one good, accurate glyph, you can absolutely tank. In fact, I think that crit rating and crit power are better than the defensive runes. Uh, you want to have one accurate glyph. You want to have uh, two crit power glyphs. Uh, you can either put two of them on your talismans and have all the rest be crit rating, or you can put one on your talisman, one on each weapon, and then have all the rest be crit rating. Either one works, but that's really what you should be doing. <clears throat> And so why are we using that instead of defensive glyphs? Well, there's two reasons. The first one is because <clears throat> there are so many tiers of elite. So a lot of times, if you, uh, say, can go to elite eights, you're going to sign up for elite eight, but you're also going to sign up for a couple of levels below elite eight so that if any of these ones have enough people in them that the dungeon will pop, that you're going to have your foot in the door for those guys too. So what this means as the tank is that oftentimes you're going to be tanking for at least one player who has E7 or better gear. Uh, and you'll still want to hold aggro. Now, it is really important that if you have a level-appropriate gear for the tier of dungeon you are tanking, that you have 100% animal allocation set to survivability. That's because bosses hurt really bad. Um, but we don't... Uh, have anything coming from our gear that gives us combat power except our weapon. So the only thing we can do to increase our damage then is use glyphs and signets. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use crit power and crit rating to give us more damage and thus more hate. And you say, well, but Schmitty, if they do so much damage, how come you're not using your defensive glyphs? And the answer is because defensive glyphs aren't impactful enough. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but in the old game, you would use defensive glyphs because they would consistently, reliably prevent you from getting one shot. In this game, the glyphs that used to cause that don't exist. But the bosses can still one-shot you. So what that means is that even at maximum level of all your defensive glyphs, uh, you're only stopping them from one-shotting you like 60% of the time. And they hit you two dozen times within the course of a normal fight. That's not very impactful, right? You're still going to die every single time that way. So we got to come up with some other way to deal with it. Unfortunately, the glyphs just aren't impactful enough to use for that slot. We really want the damage coming from there instead. So what we're going to be using, of course, are going to be cooldowns. Most of our cooldowns are 20 seconds and last for 8 to 10 seconds. So you can have full uptime on cooldowns. And we'll also be using Hammer. And uh, we'll get into the reason why for that later, but it's basically this skill right here. Pulverize, which gives you an extra 30% of your health, gives you 30% more for survivability. Uh, it makes it so that I consider hammer to be essential for tanking. That's why it's my primary weapon. Now on my actual tanking hammer, which we'll look at right here, uh, you'll see that I have alacrity. That's because the tank needs to be incredibly mobile. You will want to be able to move around and move around really fast when you need to. Also, we want a hammer whose special ability either gives us free enraged attacks, like this one does, or just gives us extra rage, right? Because the enraged effects are really important for hammer. Hammer just has a lot of tools that are incredible answers for the problems that you will face as a tank. It just answers almost all of them. And because of that, I consider hammer to be just essential. It makes the already probably most difficult role in the game much more manageable. Next we have Chaos. Now I really like the Enigmatic Apparatus of Energy here. Uh, it lets us get more Chaotic Enigmas. That's the buffs that will buff your entire group. 
when you max out your paradoxes down here, you will be very likely to buff the group, which includes buffing yourself for defense or buffing the party for damage. Both of them are really good. Uh, on top of that, Chaos provides us several silver bullet skills, skills that are really powerful that we can't get from any other weapon. We can't, we can't really get that same effect from any other weapon, and they will be essential for certain fights. And then finally, we have Shotgun. Shotgun's uh, redeeming quality is that you can hit with it from range. And in fights where you have to be very mobile, it can be useful to switch it out for your Chaos as your secondary and bring Rocket Pod instead of Distortion here. So that way, even while you're moving around a lot, you still have a high hate skill that you can use to keep aggro on the boss. Outside of that, Shotgun is really lackluster as a tanking skill. Its uh, AoEs require incredible precision to be able to pull adds off of your group. It has no real silver bullet skills where you just absolutely have to have it and can't get it anywhere else. And, on top of all that, the reload mechanic from Shotgun is atrocious. It has no synergy with tanking. A lot of tanking is reactionary, where you'll need to use something like a, a knockdown, an interrupt, to stop a skill. You'll have about one to three seconds to stop that skill before it kills everyone. And if you are reloading for one second out of those one to three seconds that you get, bad things happen a lot more. On top of that, the reload mechanic makes it so that you aren't attacking once every, time, or once every six shots, and that means you are much more likely to lose aggro, especially early on in the fight, where you are most likely to lose aggro. Well, everybody just churns out all their energy uh, and peaks their damage, you will be reloading right at that same time. So I, I'm just not a fan of shotgun. So let's get into the build that we're going to be using here. Uh, let's check out our passives here. Okay, so we have a ground pound, distortion, seethe, thick skin, Pulverize an eruption with the Mistress's Bashosin as our gadget. And this is going to be our core tank build. You can bring this most anywhere and it's going to do fine. Then we're going to have Outrage, Rock Hard, Percussive Maintenance, Fast and Furious, and Resonance Cascade. So let's run through it real quick. Uh, Ground Pound is our high hate AoE. It builds rage. Awesome. Use it to pick up adds. Use it when you want to save up energy. And then we have Distortion. This is our one-off single-target high-hate build, or high-hate attack from uh, Chaos. It allows us to generate paradoxes, which give group buffs. It continues to allow us to hold aggro, and that's really all it is there for. Then we have Seethe. Uh, it gives us four hammer energy, which allows us to sort of on command be able to use Eruption or Thick Skin if we need to. And its passive Outrage essentially gives us one free enraged attack on command, which can be quite powerful. You will need that sometimes. Then we have Thick Skin, which uh, just increases your protection rating a lot, makes it so you take way less damage. This is going to be one of the ways where we avoid dying in one hit. And on top of that, the Rock Hard passive for it is crazy. Look at this. A barrier that is one and a half times your maximum HP for five seconds basically makes you immortal for five seconds. This eats most things that you are going to to uh, get hit by in dungeons. And also this uh, barrier is really visible, so it also lets the healer know if you aren't communicating via chat or some kind of, you know, vent discord that you have used a defensive cooldown and they don't need to worry about you for the next couple of seconds. Then... Obviously, we have uh, Pulverize. This is a big deal, right? That 30% extra health that you can keep up pretty easily, that makes it so that only maybe two or three bosses in the whole set of dungeons we have right now can actually still do critical damage to you in a single hit. So this by itself winds up essentially taking the place of another uh, cooldown because it gives us 30% more survivability. Then we're also going to take its passive, Percussive Maintenance, for the heal that it gives us each time we hit while enraged with it. This sort of just helps you to relieve some of the pressure from the uh, healer, and it can also bridge the gap if the healer is forced off of you for a little while or dies right before the fight's over. This can actually give you enough HP back that you can finish off the fight without them.
or wait until they have returned to you and still be alive. Then finally we have Eruption. This is just the single best tanking elite in the game. It is crowd control, it's an AoE impair, it's an interrupt against uh, party wipe skills, it's a purge if you have to wipe a buff off of the boss, it exposes your target so that your DPS can do more damage, it is always useful in every single fight, and we'll be using it in almost every fight outside of a couple where we'll be using a skill called Immutable, which we'll get over or go over in just a second here. Now we still have two more passives. Uh, Fast and Furious, uh, read that as more mobility, more hate. This is just a great passive for tanks, because it does everything that you want to do. Then finally we have Resonance Cascade. This is a must-have if you are using uh, Chaos, because it makes it so that your Chaotic Enigmas, which normally start off as a buff on the boss, instead are a buff immediately for your party. It will also give us an extra chance to generate paradoxes, which will help to supplement us because we'll not be generating a lot of them with only one chaos skill. And this will help us to just build them up over time and get a couple of more uh, buffs than we would have gotten otherwise without it. So those are the real uh, core skills you'll be using, and we got a couple of extras here we're going to go through. Most of the time, you will be replacing Seethe and its passive Outrage for these skills. Our first one is going to be Pain Suppression just uh, makes it so that whenever you get hit, before the hit hits you, you will heal. Uh, you'll heal for 50% without the passive, but with the passive you heal for more damage than the thing deals, right? So in any fight where you're not in danger of dying in one hit, this just makes you basically immortal for 8 seconds. Pretty great. Then we also have uh, Burning Wrath, and uh, not really going to make you read this, but basically whenever you use it while enraged, it leaves a persisting hazard on the ground that deals high hate damage and slows anything that goes through it for 5 seconds. This in effect lets you be in two places at once while trying to pick up adds, because they can run either to that AoE that you've placed on the ground for Burning Wrath, or towards you to pull the, uh, the adds off of them. So that is super powerful while enraged, and again... Uh, you probably be switching out Seethe for that, which is sort of disappointing because it gives you your on-command uh, enraged attack, but you'll still be alright. You can still use this to great effect for picking up adds. Next we're going to look at Chaos. It's got a couple cool skills. <clears throat> uh, oh, and if you are using uh, Burning Wrath, I personally prefer to use Veil of Deformity rather than the passive for Burning Wrath because I just feel like Veil of Deformity does better. So, now going on to Chaos's skills. First we have Twist Fate. Obviously it's just a bunch of protection rating. You take way less damage for 7 seconds. And if you take its passive, Backlash, you will get a barrier that reflects 50% of that damage to, uh, to your opponent, which is great. So that does tons of damage to your, uh, to your target, and also makes it so you're taking even less damage. So we love Backlash. Uh, then we have Evulsion. This skill is incredible. Right? It's got a 15 meter range. It is a taunt. It's a pull. It's a purge. It's passive makes it an AoE. It's like a mini eruption. This skill is awesome. And then finally we will be using uh, Immutable once in a while. It basically just makes you Im <laughs> in invulnerable for five seconds. You know, whatever. It's fine. Makes you immutable. Uh, most of the time we'll be using Eruption, but once in a while, if you need like a third cooldown, or if you just have a mechanic that the boss uses that you don't feel like dealing with, you just want to cheese it out with invincibility, this is your skill. And that's really all for the skills. The only thing we have left is gadgets. There's a few of them. Uh... Manticore X27 Agitator is a great taunt. Just ranged taunt, easy to use. We love it. Uh, the Rapid Engagement Module and the Superluminal Bridging Device are great for mobility. Again, you will need a lot of that. You can use these once in a while. Uh, Electrogravatic Attractor acts as a pull. That can be useful once in a while uh, if you're not using uh, Evulsion. Compact Catastrophe Shelter can act as another cooldown, but it is also effective for the entire party can be very powerful, and you'll use it in certain spots. And finally, we have the Phoenician Support Stratagem. Do you want to not have chains on you anymore? Do you want to not be slowed anymore? 
Do you want to not be stunned anymore? Do you want to just cheese out uh, certain things that are supposed to kill you but are considered to be crowd control effects so you are now immune to them? Do you know who your friend is? This guy. This guy is your friend. And that is really the whole thing. That's what you're going to be using while you tank. And I will be uh, very shortly creating a guide for each dungeon from the perspective of the tank, since the tank needs to know the most amount. And I hope to see you there.